Up next, my painting video. Well, hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of The Interstellar Painter. I'm not sure how many of these I'm gonna be making, but uh, I've been wanting for some time now to post a video that shares my process of creating an oil painting from beginning to end. And ever since putting or sharing my uh, paintings on my social media pages, I've been asked about creating a, a video like this. So uh, I do have some things I need to get done for the upcoming San Diego Comic-Con art show. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to finally put one of these on the channel. Now, before I begin, uh, I felt it important to provide a little introduction of how I got started. So just bear with me on this. Now, ever since I was a kid, I could draw. In fact, when I was a kid, I was inspired by the guys who drew all the Sunday comics to become a comic artist myself when I grew up. But eventually I ran into a lot of people who were much more talented than I was, so I lost any confidence I could make any living doing art. And uh, eventually this led me down to a path that uh, got me into becoming an optometrist. Now, I'm further off in my life and my career, and uh, I have a kind of a, a now or never attitude about things uh, or doing things that you've always aspired to do, and uh, that's where kind of all of this uh, has come from. Um, I, of course, have always had my model building as an avenue for my art, but I've always wanted to explore my, uh, my drawing and eventually get into painting. I did take some drawing classes a while back, so I did get started with that, but never really got into painting anything until about uh, about four years ago. And actually what prompted me to do this was the pandemic. Um, many of you, I'm sure, experienced the same thing. I would come home from work kind of depressed and a bit anxious about all the stuff that was going on. And even though I had my model building there on the side, I actually started watching Bob Ross videos to help me along too. And uh, as with many who do, I became inspired to try and I let my wife know that I wanted to try this, so she's kind enough to get me what you see here, which is a Bob Ross painting kit. And this comes with a set of paints and spatulas and tools, pretty much everything you need to get started. Now let me take a second just to show you the first painting I ever did. Uh, so the way you get started with Bob Ross's technique is you apply something called liquid white. Uh, this is a white mixture that comes with the painting kit. You apply it all over the canvas, and the first thing you can tell right away is that it allows you to make some really beautiful gradients. Uh, you can blend colors really well with that. And next thing you know, you are dabbing on paint here and there just as you follow along this technique, and then you end up with something that looks like a tree. <laughs> so, uh, so the one thing about his method, and the one thing I think draws people to it, or at least inspired to try, is you don't really need to know how to draw anything. Uh, you're just kind of putting on paint in here and there, and the way that he does that, and you end up with something that looks like this. Now, I don't think this painting's very good, but I keep it as a reminder of how I got started. Um, but you know, eventually I uh, decided to go onto YouTube to try to learn more about oil painting. And uh, as I did so, there are other methods, of course, of oil painting. You don't have to do the wet on wet method. And I just started following a number of different artists like these guys here. And uh, they are generous with their time to post tutorials online. Now, many of these videos are used to help generate business for their oil painting classes, but nonetheless, they are really detailed and found, found them very helpful. And I still watch a lot of them. And uh, the one thing I want to also do was to take advantage of my drawing skills and to paint more details on, uh, on paintings. Now, uh, talking about um, different techniques now, you can paint uh, uh, paintings that are realistic looking to some that are somewhere in between realistic and abstract to completely abstract. And right now I'm in the phase of doing a lot more realistic type of painting. I do eventually want to explore some other methods and uh, maybe some that aren't quite as detailed, but uh, I'm um, still in the learning process of that. And uh, so I'll let you know how that goes as I, as I proceed on here. Um, now, let me take a second just to show you some of the oil paintings that I've done. Uh, this first one here is of the Mandalorian as he's flying his souped up Naboo starfighter. And this one here is my attempt to recreate the famous matte painting from Star Trek's pilot, The Cage, as of course are the ruins of the castle on uh, Rigel. And then there's this one here, one of my favorites. This is Grogu, of course, from The Mandalorian. I've also tried landscapes and I've tried painting birds and a few other things. 
So that's how it's been going for me, and I really do enjoy painting. And uh, I have to say, though, that one of the things that made me hesitant about putting a video on the channel like this is that I just simply don't have a lot of experience oil painting. And that's why I wanted to do that introduction, just to kind of let you know where I was coming from. So if any of you guys out there watching this are experienced artists and see me doing something a little unconventional, I'm just going to ask you that you uh, give me some latitude here and be kind. <laughs> Well, enough of that uh, introduction. Now, let's go ahead and get started with our project. The first thing I want to do is show you what I'm going to be painting on, and this is called a canvas panel. Um, this is something you can get at art stores or craft stores, and uh, I decided to, to uh, paint on this versus a stretch canvas just to help with, uh, with displaying and uh, maybe to save a little space here. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did display at the Comic-Con Art Show. This is me hanging some paintings there. You can see it's a vertical display. Uh, but what I have going on this year is a display table because I'm going to be uh, exhibiting some 3D printed pieces as well. So I thought this would help me some, save some space versus uh, uh, displaying something that's a little bulkier. So let's go ahead and get started with our project here. The first thing I want to do is something called a toned ground. Uh, a lot of these panels now and canvases come already primed. You can certainly buy them without any primer on them, but uh, a lot of them come with a white primer called gesso. And uh, after following a number of artists on YouTube, I found many of them don't like painting on a white background for a number of reasons, uh, one of which is uh, by applying a medium value on your canvas, uh, it'll affect the way the colors come across uh, once your painting is done. The other thing is that it just, just uh, jump starts the painting process to begin with, and there are a, a number of other reasons as well. So what we're going to be doing here is applying a warm value. You can either choose a cool or a warm value. We'll be using a warm value here. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started with that, and then I will show you what I'll be painting. Okay, so what I have here now is just some burnt sienna, and on this plate I also have some odorless uh, mineral spirits, or thinner, and uh, so we're going to just mix our paint here with that to make kind of a creamy mixture. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and brush it onto our canvas panel here. Okay, we have the whole canvas covered. I'm just let this sit for a minute or so. I'm ready to wipe this down. And uh, some people like to leave the brush strokes there. I'm gonna create a surface that's nice and even. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and wipe it down here. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it like this for about 24 hours and uh, let this dry before I get started with painting. All right, well it's been 24 hours, the canvas is ready to go. The next thing we need to do is trace an image onto the canvas. Before I talk about that though, let me show you the picture I'll be using here as our inspiration for this painting. This is a scene from the movie Dune that was released earlier this year. I really love this movie as well as the, uh, the first part that came out a couple of years ago. There's definitely a lot of scenes in this film that you could uh, make into a really nice painting, I think. But this one in particular is one that caught my eye, and it's something that I could easily find uh, online as well to get a copy of anyway to use as a reference here. So how to trace an image onto your canvas? There's a couple ways to do this. The first is using a grid as a guide. Uh, basically what you do is you take your reference photo, you size it up, crop it, and you, um, you size it so that it's the same dimensions as the canvas that you're going to be painting on, and then you draw a grid onto that. And this can certainly be measured out with rulers and all of that, but um, these days it's easy just to do it on an app that takes the picture, you get everything centered and all that, you decide the dimensions of the squares of the grid, you place it on there, and then you're going to draw that same grid uh, here onto your canvas. And uh, because everything is proportioned the same, then you use that grid as a guide uh, to help you draw out your image. So this is the method I followed for a number of my paintings at the beginning, um, and uh, and it works fine. You know, it, it takes a bit of time, but another way that you can uh, transfer an image onto your canvas is with a projector. And now I have to admit, I did hold off getting a projector at the beginning because I just felt that there was that it was just an easy way out. The Projector, however, is just another way to um, get your image on here, right? It's, it's just the image that you're tracing on there is just a foundation to start from. And uh, using a projector is something that is not, not anything new. In fact, it goes way, way back when to even the old masters, uh, when they even didn't have electricity, they found ways to project things onto walls and canvases. Um, 
and you can do reading about that, but uh, whether it was using special mirrors or something called a camera obscura, which is kind of a pinhole camera, uh, they were able to project images so that that could be their guide for tracing things onto whatever it is they were painting on. So I don't know, I just kind of came to the conclusion that it's really not a big deal. And uh, it's really helpful to have a projector because it's just a little faster to get this step done. So that is what we're going to be using on this uh, project here is a projector. So I'm going to go ahead and get it all set up and uh, I'll show you how you trace an image onto the canvas from there. Okay, well I have the projector set up here. As you can see, it's uh, showing the image now on the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and dim the lights down so I can trace this. Well, not sure how well you can see it in this light, but uh, this is now the tracing. So what I'm going to do next now is apply a fixative for obvious reasons. We don't want uh, the, the pencil to smear as we're painting. So I'm going to do that next and allow that to dry, and then we'll get started with painting. And if you're interested, by the way, this is the projector I'm using here. This is a DRJ projector, and it hooks directly to the laptop via HDMI cable. All right, well, now that my drawing has been protected with a fixative, I'm ready to get started. And uh, so we're just going to be using various shades of brown. I have a whole collection of oil paints down here, uh, but really just using um, browns for this project for the most part. My plan is to paint the figure in and then work in the background later. Uh, there's a lot of dust and all that around him, so uh, we'll be able to blend that in once the figure is painted. Um, I'm going to start off with the darker colors and then work my way down here, getting a little lighter as we get out towards the, uh, uh, his arm that's further away from us. And uh, as we get down towards the bottom again, just to help with the blending process later. Palette ready to go here. And uh, my various paints and brushes. I, I usually like to go through all my brushes and select brushes I think will be helpful with the project. So I'm um, all set to go here. Oh, one other thing I want to quickly make note of, uh, I'm sure you've noticed through the years I often use gloves. Um, that certainly protect my hands, skin from all the solvents and stuff that we use. Um, and I've had a, a long history of skin sensitivity, so uh, might seem uncomfortable to paint this way, but for me, I, it's just how it works out best. So, Okay, so one thing I want to do to begin with here is actually do something we call color blocking. So I'm just going to put down uh, the colors that the basic colors will be using in each of the areas here and, and then we'll build on from there. So I'm just starting off with some burnt umber here just to fill in these areas. This first layer actually is fairly thin. It's just to kind of get the process started here. All right, well, I'm going to step aside here and let this dry. Uh, I know it doesn't look like much, uh, this particular stage of color blocking. It really is just putting down the basic colors you're going to be building from. And um, I did not use a very thick coat of paint, so hopefully within the next couple days it'll be ready to go. That is the one thing about oil paints, and you can look at it as a disadvantage or not. Uh, they do take a bit of time to dry, obviously, versus acrylics. Uh, I've used acrylics in the past, uh, and it's something I might you know venture more into later for now though i really do enjoy uh the way oils blend so easily and and i don't know there's just something about them that i really do enjoy over acrylics at this point all right so i will be back it won't take long for you but it'll take a couple days for me it's actually been a few days since i sat here and in fact the paint was already dry the next day um, I started working on another project for the San Diego Comic-Con art show, so I didn't get a chance to get to this until now. Um, but everything is nice and dry, of course. Uh, it didn't take long to dry because it wasn't a very heavy application of paint. Um, 
So I think what I'm going to do here, I, I'm tempted to get started on the background, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and work more on the figure first before we do that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Now there is some more detail around his hair that I will add, especially the strands that are blowing in the wind here. But uh, I'm going to wait until I paint in the background uh, before I add those in. So if it uh, still looks a little rough here, that's why I, I will eventually add that in. So at this point, I'm not going to do too much with highlights. We're going to have to wait until we get further along to start adding in some of those details there. Right now, these are more the darker and medium tones or values that we're adding in here. So I think this is a good stopping point for me here now and what I've done in this session was to build on what I did before using those colors as a base and uh, adding to them. In the process of doing that I've added a bit more detail here now around his face. More detail is going to be seen along the hair but I'm going to wait to add in a lot of that after adding in or bringing in the background. So I also worked on the arms of his suit. You can see a bit more lines and detail here. Most of this detailing is going to be obscured by all the dust around him, which is why you see this pattern here. That is going to blend in with our background. There's really not a lot of detail that you see on this suit. It's really just more of a silhouette of his body and you see most of the detail there around his face. So I'm going to give this another two to three days to dry. And All right, well, we're going to get back to it here now and just bear with me because the washer and dryer are going on in the background again. Um, so what I've done here since the last time I was recording, I did went ahead and started adding in some of this debris that you see flying around here. Uh, and this was done with a fan brush, as you can see here, as well as just a round brush, uh, just kind of dabbing paint on there. And uh, a lot of this now is going to be blended over or at least obscured somewhat with the uh, with the cloud I'm going to be making now around him. So before I add any more detail now to his face and his hair, I'm going to go ahead and start applying this cloud of dust that surrounds him. So uh, first thing we're going to do is mix up the colors, which I'm going to be using some uh, uh, Naples orange along with some white as well as a uh, raw sienna mixed together. And uh, so like you see in the picture now, we're going to be applying a darker tone around the edges and it gets lighter and lighter as we get towards the, uh, towards the character. Well, the first place I'm going to apply the white color to is around his face. Um, uh, yeah, out of the entire picture, that's really where we want all the definition to be. I want the uh, viewer's um, gaze to be directed towards the details on his face. So you can see why we want the brown color dried because if you if you don't wait for that, it'll just start mixing all together. And let's get a skinnier brush here now to apply some of these details around his hair. And um, as I mentioned now a number of times, I'll, I will go back to his hair and these other parts here later. We just want to get all of this in first. Now I realize as I start painting over this now uh, that some of this was is going to be completely painted over and that's okay. If anything it gave me a way to see how that would have look after applying it with the fan brush as I had planned so um, it's not a big deal if I cover some of this. Okay we're going to go now to a larger brush and um, as I said we're starting off lighter here but uh, we'll eventually darken this up. In fact I'm already starting to do that here. We'll blend all this together for sure. Let me go ahead and get a lot of this on here and then uh, we'll start working on the darker tones. So you can see I'm already starting the blending process here, starting to obscure some of the details here. 
with the hooks that he's using on the sand creature. And a lot of this foot here is obscured by the dust, so I'm already starting to kind of brush this, brush the dust in that is hiding that foot there. And this is just the first coating that I'm applying here now. I'm definitely going to have to, as I said, come back and, and blend and uh, work on retouching some of these areas and doing more of this. So a lot of these details here on this side have to be a bit softer than what you're seeing now. I think this is a good stomping point here for me. Uh, what I've got completed now is I've added in a lot of the dusty surroundings here. We got all this debris flying around him. Uh, we will be adding a bit more debris here when I come back. And uh, got to work on obscuring these details here in this section, as well as adding more details to his face and his hair. And that should be the final session to complete the painting. All right, well, it's time for the last painting section here. And what I'm going to concentrate now are the details of the hair and the face, and then we'll work on blending the rest of this together. So let's go ahead and start with the hair first. So what I'm using here is just a lighter shade of these colors. Uh, it's a combination of burnt sienna and a uh, blush color, along with some burnt umber. And uh, just kind of painting in now some of these strands and just using a very thin brush here to do this. And I've uh, thinned down the uh, paint a bit with some mineral spirit so I can get fine lines here. So we got all the hair strands in. I'm gonna move on now to bringing in some more reflections off his face here. So I'm gonna just lighten this up a little bit. So I'm pretty satisfied with the way the face is looking now. I'm ready to turn my attention now to the rest of him here, adding in more details. And then we'll get into blending this and this bottom section in. Okay, well this is a pretty quick session here. Most of the painting was completed. Really what I wanted to do here was to concentrate on blending. What we needed to do was to blend in these areas here and uh, that was accomplished by getting the colors to match a little more closely so you didn't have as much contrast. Obviously we do want to retain contrast, but we do want to give an illusion that um, this is being obscured by all the dust. So that's proceeding on pretty well. I'm not completely finished with it yet. I want to do a bit more here, but the paint is a bit too wet to continue on there. Uh, I haven't been using very thick paint, so that shouldn't take too long to dry and move on. Uh, we've got the face details uh, painted in. I'm uh, very pleased with how that turned out, as well as all the hair strands that you see there. So uh, besides the blending that I have to complete there, I just have to add in the bigger pieces of debris that are flying around. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap all that up and show you the completed painting in just a second. All right, guys, well, here is a finished painting of Paul Atreides atop a sandworm. This, of course, is a scene from the 2024 movie Dune Part 2. Using this photo as inspiration, the painting was done on a canvas board using Gamblin oil paints. 
And just a quick review of the project now. I started by first using a process called toning the ground, which basically involves applying a mid-value tone to the white prime canvas. This was then followed by tracing the image onto the canvas board using a projector. I then proceeded onto painting the figure before filling in the final background. Now I should say that this is not quite 100% complete since I still need to do one more step and that is to apply a final coat of varnish over it. I usually wait about a week or so just to be sure that the painting is fully dry. The gloss varnish coat is of course to add protection but I also like how that gloss coat makes the colors pop out even more just like they do on a model when gloss coats are sprayed on. Overall I'm pretty happy with the results and I look forward to displaying it at this year's San Diego Comic Con art show. Okay guys, well that is going to do it for now. I hope you enjoyed following along. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at initiativemodeler at gmail.com. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to put together for some time, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, I just wanted to share my process of how I go about painting an oil painting. But uh, I don't intend on making a bunch of painting videos. Uh, painting is something I really do enjoy doing and, and doing it without distractions is really something that's uh, important to me. Um, so it'll be a while before I make another painting video. Um, this process is certainly gonna evolve for me uh, as I continue on as a painter. So you know, who knows down the line I might do another one. But for now, um, I'll uh, let this one stand as is. Um, now, I wanted to also share with you that uh, I, I did make it to Spain for our vacation. In fact, uh, in between the time I've been doing this painting, I've actually been to Spain and back. We got back last weekend, and it was such a fun trip. I'd highly recommend visiting that country if you ever get a chance. It's a beautiful country, and the people were great and uh, just had a, a wonderful time. Uh, one of the things that was unexpected, however, was I actually got to visit a few filming sites, one of which is this one here. Now I'm standing in a place called Plaza de España in Seville and it just so happened this was chosen to represent Naboo in one of the prequels. So I had my wife line up the shot and try to get it as close as possible to what was seen on screen. I think I did a pretty decent job here. Uh, but uh, this place is absolutely beautiful, really stunning and um, pictures just don't do it justice. But uh, again this is located in Seville. Also got to visit uh, a couple of Game of Thrones uh, film sites, which were really interesting to see. I loved that show. I'm not as big of an expert on Game of Thrones, but uh, I know they had a lot of really cool exotic uh, uh, sites that they chose to film that show in, and uh, they did choose a few uh, places in Spain to do that, so we did get to visit a couple of those sites as well. All right, guys, coming up on the channel now, uh, what I have to do is I have to finish uh, a few more projects for the San Diego Comic-Con Art Show. And upon finishing those, I do uh, plan on posting a video that, sh that uh, I'll show all of these projects and share them with you. And uh, then after that, uh, I'm going to get on to building again. I just don't know which model I'm going to start off with. Uh, after the Comic-Con art show. That's going to be, by the way, in about six weeks or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. It's at the end of July. Um, and uh, so after that's done, I'll get right back on to building again. And uh, one of the models I do have planned on sharing with you is one of the ships from the Ragtag Fleet from Battlestar Galactica. This is a model from Steve Caracato. Uh, it is of the Rising Star, so definitely look forward to putting that one together for sure. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.